the TV show 2020 did a, an interview, a, a story with Bill Porter and um, uh, some producers uh, bought it and they approached Stephen and me. And um, I'm, really, I'm really proud of that show, but I think I'm the most proud of the writing. Um, that was a tough get. He was alive. And um, as, as wonderful as the fellow was and as, how, as moving as his story was, it had no third act. He was still alive. And you can't just start making up stuff out of whole cloth. So it was difficult to find out how to do that. And um, I was really sort of proud of the solution that we came up with. I found it to be really uh, elegant. We told stories about his customers. We fictionalized them so we could stick to the truth about what Bill had done and um, uh, sort of in the reflection of the stories we told about his customers, we saw Bill's growth. And uh, he loved it. He, he took exception to the fact that we implied that he had a crush on, um, on Shelley. Um, and I said, some, I said to, Shelley told me that, the real Shelley told me that, and her husband was there, and I said, wow, I, I, thought, I just got that, I just thought he, he did, and the husband went, oh, yes, he did. <laughs> so we were dead on. Nobody had ever told us that, we just sort of gleaned it, and, you know, it's good storytelling to put a little romance in there. That was just blessed from the word go. I've never done a makeup role like that. That was a caution. Um, in pre-production, they kept talking about uh, the transition from me uh, young to old. Could we do it in one day? And how long would the makeup take? And uh, Charles Poirier was the, the makeup artist. And he's, it, I, because I'd written it, I was in on the production meeting. And he said, you're asking the wrong question. The, the question is, how long is Macy's skin going to last before you have to shut down production? He said, well, I'm going to... You can't believe the things I'm going to do to him. It's really rough on the skin. And he wasn't wrong. And um, uh, uh, the three of us, hair, makeup, and me, had sort of a, an agreement that anybody could cry uncle any time. But I think we shot that for 28 days, and we waved our call 28 times. One time I was out of the chair, getting all that crap off, and back in the chair, I think nine hours later, it was it was tough. I was glad when that was over, and um, they I could tell some, they were they, everyone was sort of pussyfooting around something. And I said, "What's up?" And they said, "We can't do this if we have to gaff quat your hair. They've got this stuff called gaff quat where they can uh, slick your hair down so they can put a ball cap on and then they put a wig on the ball cap." And I said, "Well, it's not time." I said, "Well, what are you saying?" He said, "Will you shave your head?" And I did. That was not a pretty sight. That was tough. I shaved my head for um, for Shameless, too. It was right before Christmas, and uh, all the women in my life said, no, it's it's kind of sexy. I like it. You look at you have a nice head. It's kind of sexy and tough. I got seven hats for Christmas. <laughs> Can you briefly tell us what Bill Porter's story was? What was the... Bill Porter was born with cerebral palsy, and... Um, he, uh, he was deemed unemployable, and uh, they tried to talk his mom into putting him in a home, and she would have none of it, and taught him that he could do anything uh, if he put his mind to it. And um, Bill uh, wanted to work, and he applied for a job at the Watkins Company going door to door. And Bill's cerebral palsy bent one arm. Uh, one arm was relatively useless. I mean, he could use it a bit. And his hips were way out of whack, so walking was difficult for him. And it slurred his speech. Um, uh, his jaw was so it was difficult to understand him a little bit. In other words, a born door-to-door -door salesman. I mean, you can imagine, you know, knock, knock, and there's Bill Porter. Well, the punchline is... He outsold everyone. 
um, he they they wouldn't hire him. The people at Watkins said, I, I, I don't know how to tell you this. You have a disability. You can't. This is miles of walking. You can't do it. He said, give me your worst route. What do you have to lose? Nobody wants it anyway. Give me your worst route. And as I said, he outsold everyone. And um, we interviewed um, some of his people, and he just became a fixture in their lives. And he was an amazing salesman. I mean, if you let him in the door, you weren't getting out. <laughs> we couldn't get rid of him until you'd bought four or five products. And we fictionalized uh, their stories, and it was so sweet. Oh, man, they use it as a training film. And it's just a boo-hoo fest. You just weep, weep your eyes out. And um, as a joke, uh, at the end of the thing, we put um, uh, a crawl that said Bill had won um, this award and had met the president and blah, 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 and all the accolades that he had received. And then the last one was, for tough cleaning problems, contact Bill Porter. And we gave this website address. And um, I, I said to everyone, you know, I think that, that's his address. Are you prepared? And they said, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the show aired and it crashed in four minutes. And it took him about three days to get it back up. And they've stopped, they stopped keeping records because he sold so much, so many products online that they don't hold the contest anymore. Um, and uh, he died recently, but... Um, uh, the film uh, afforded him the ability to buy a, a new house that was on one floor, and he sold a boatload of Watkins products. And uh, he was just as tenacious online as he was in person.